What's up Copa Fanatics? It's Lauren here with Copa Fina Wine Imports. Today we are discussing the four inland DOs of Galicia. We'll talk a bit about the history, the culture, terroir, and of course the grapes. So this video is great for those of you who would like to taste, enjoy, or sell wines of inland Galicia. Galicia juts out like a handle from the rest of Spain, occupying the country's northwest corner just above Portugal. Its culture, like its wines, carries a strong regional identity, combining many Portuguese traditions with Celtic foundations derived from its first inhabitants. Many of Galicia's wines resemble those grown across the border, such as Vino Verdes of Portugal's Minho region, and Galicia is often referred to as Green Spain for its vibrant landscape, a vast departure from the arid oranges and browns that define the rest of Iberia. Valdeoras, Galicia's easternmost appellation, bridges Ribera Sacra with Castilla y Leon's Bierzo. Valdeoras' name translates to Valley of Gold, and it's a nod to the riches extracted there during Roman rule. The Sil River flows through the appellation, but the region has more of a continental climate than elsewhere in Galicia. It's less humid and has drier, hotter summers. Valdeoras is composed of thousands of small vineyard plots and scattered amongst various elevations from high hillside plantings to lower parcels closer to riverbanks. It's home to relatively few wineries, but they assemble fruit from the many growers operating there. Though various soils can be found in Valdeoras, the region is largely associated with slate. Godeo produces Valdeoras' most heralded wines, which for some critics can compete with Rias Baixas as Galicia's finest whites. Often described as mineral-driven, Godeo wines can achieve marked concentration and complexity, both with and without barrel fermentation and aging. Reds from Mencia are also produced, as are wines from other Galician and Spanish varieties. However, only Mencia and Godeo can be varietally labeled and should achieve 85% of the blend. Ribero's reputation for quality wines dates back to Roman rule and was later continued by the Benedictine and Cistercian monks who tended to its vines. The region's focal point is the town of Ribadavia, where the rivers Minho and Avia converge. Heavily fragmented vineyard parcels, rooted mostly in decomposed granite, are harvested in these rivers' valleys at various elevations. With high humidity and elevated levels of precipitation, Ribeiro is also dangerously susceptible to spring frost. Production in Ribeiro is almost entirely focused upon white wine, with white wines being at about 90% of total production. Though the region was largely replanted to Palomino in the years following the phylloxera crisis, the best whites today come from various local grapes, most importantly the semi-aromatic Trechadura. Most of the remaining output is dedicated to red wine from an array of native and Spanish varietals. Ribera Sacra forms a crescent shape through the nexus of Galicia's two major rivers, the Sil and the Minho. The region's name translates to sacred riverbanks, an allusion to many monasteries once housed here that established the region's wine growing traditions in the Middle Ages. The landscape is dramatic, with ancient terraces carved into the steeply descending hillside plantings, resulting in viticultural challenges on par of those of the Mosul, Duero, and Northern Rhone. A young Appalachian only officially recognized in 1996, Ribera Sacra has been also responsible for much of Galicia's recent attention, with producers giving a face to the region's red wine capabilities in addition to its long-admired whites. Ribera Sacra is further divided into five subzones. We have Amandi, which sits at the Appalachian center on the steep northern slopes of the sill. It is the most historic and often most viewed as the highest in quality. Chantada is located on the Minho's right bank, opposite of Ribero do Minho. And then you have Ribero do Sil, which lies on the left bank of the sill until just after its confluence with the Minho around the town of Los Perez. Then you have Quiroga Bibe, when it occupies the region's eastern sector and is carved in half by the sill. So vineyards that are along the sill and near its lower sectors tend to be more grounded in granitic soil. And then the vineyards in the upper sill have more slate. The sill valley is drier and slightly more cooler than the Minho. Wines produced in Ribera Sacra are predominantly red, with Mencia as its most important grape, covering about 90% of their vineyards. Here, Mencia can achieve wines perceived as crunchier and lighter in body than those from Bierzo, but often just as complex. 
Many additional varieties are permitted and can yield exciting wines under the renewed enthusiasm from the local producers. Monterey lies south of Ribera Sacra, hugging the Portuguese border. Like Val de Oras, the Appalachian experiences both Atlantic and continental influences, resulting in hot, dry summers and cold winters. The region contains diverse soils, but the best soil for white wines is granitic sand, and clay and slate are preferable for reds. Despite its ancient tradition of viticulture, it is Galicia's oldest winemaking region, only a very small number of wineries operate within Monterey today. However, recent investment in the area suggests future growth for the DO. Monterey exclusively makes white and red wines, and its whites are produced from Donna Branca, Fideo, and Trechadura, among other regional varietals, and its reds are primarily from Rencia and Bastardo, with other blending grapes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like or leave a comment. If you're interested in learning about Galicia's Coastal DO, check out our Ria Spicious video. And don't forget to follow Copa Fina so you can be notified when we post new videos. Keep on watching for some more beautiful pictures of this region. Cheers.